In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the cam sensor on this Volkswagen Beetle. Let's get into it. We're going to disconnect the battery, lift this cover up, and the negative cable is over here. Use a 10 millimeter wrench, loosen up the nut right there, grab the cable, and just slide it off and out of the way. You should have a little cap right here. You want to pop that off. You can use the straight blade screwdriver, pop that off. This vehicle doesn't have that. And then you want to go grab that hook right in the hole right there and just pull it straight out. It's just clipped on right in the middle there. It pops right off. Now you can access the lug nuts. Take the wheel lock key, find which one is the wheel lock using a 17 millimeter socket. Take that out. And go around, take the other lug nuts off. Before we take the last one off, I'm just gonna hold the wheel on so it doesn't fall. Take that off. And then take the wheel off. Now I'm gonna take the inner fender well out. Use a T25 socket. Take all these screws out. There's a bunch right here, and there should be three right there. You want to take those out, and then just go around the perimeter of the inner fender well. Take all those out. That one should be out. Over here. And all the screws in the back as well. These ones are just broken. And just slide the inner fender well out. Your vehicle may have a shield right here. You want to remove that. This vehicle doesn't have it. There's going to be some fasteners right there and on the other side. Take those out. Take that shield down. Here's a screw right here. Use a T25 socket. Take that out. That should slide down here. If it's snapped in or screwed in up here, you want to disconnect that. You need to pull the panel down. There's a couple push pins right there. Just use a trim tool and just slide these off, just like that. You can get new ones or we can adjust these later. Underneath the car, on the driver's side of the radiator, there's a drain right here. You wanna take a drain bucket, have it underneath, and then we'll loosen up this plug. It's gonna drain out. Make sure you don't do this while the vehicle's hot. I'm gonna make sure it's cool. And to speed it up a little bit, I'm gonna open the cap and that'll help the coolant drain out faster. There we go. Now we can close this up. Now I'm taking a 15 millimeter wrench on the tensioner right here. You can grab it there and then just slide this back. Be careful. There is a lot of tension on here. Then I'm going to take a hex key and there's a hole in here. You can slide that in position there and then let go of the wrench and that keeps the tension off the tensioner. Then you can take the belt off. Slide it off the AC compressor, off the power steering pump, off the crank pulley, and off the alternator. It comes right out. We're going to take this hose off. Just use a hose clamp, pliers, move that hose clamp down, and just rock this hose back and forth. Slide it off. Just like that, slide that out of the way. That should be good. We're gonna take this cover off. It's a couple clips. Just slide those clips off. And slide the cover out. 
Disconnect the connector right here. Just push down on the two tabs on the side. That connector comes off. And just slide it out of the bracket right there. Now we can take this hose off, use some hose clamp pliers. Slide that up. Twist that hose off and out of the way. There's a Phillips head screw right here. Just use a Phillips head screwdriver. Take this screw out. Just gonna use a magnet. Take that out. In the back here, there's a 10 millimeter nut. Just use a 10 millimeter socket. Loosen that up and take that out. I'm gonna wanna use a magnet for this as well. Grab the reservoir, slide it up. And there should be a nut right here on the washer reservoir. Take that nut off, use a 10 millimeter socket. And we'll just slide this out a little bit. Slide the bracket off the stud. This comes right out. That. And you can disconnect the hose at the bottom right there if you would choose. Or over here. Might be a little bit easier to take it off over here. Take that bracket off. Using the hose clamp pliers, squeeze this hose clamp. Slide that up. And then twist the hose, slide that off. Connect the bracket right here. And we'll just pull this out. And out of the way. I'm just supporting the front of the engine because we're taking the engine mount out. I'm going to use a 13 millimeter socket. Take this bolt out on this bracket. Sixteen millimeter socket, take these bolts out on both sides. And using an eighteen millimeter socket, take these two bolts out. I'm just gonna loosen those up a little bit because the engine might shift. I might have to tighten this up a little more. those out and grab the mount and it slides right out. I'm going to use a 16 millimeter socket, take the bolts out of this mount or this bracket. You can access two of them up from up top. The other one you can access back here. Might have to raise the engine up a little bit. Just using a floor jack and just raising up on the engine a little bit. Just make it a little easier. Underneath, I'm gonna take the 16 millimeter socket, take this bolt out. That's not gonna come out. That's just gonna stay with the mount. And get that other bolt out as well. With all the bolts loose, grab this bracket and just slide it up. You're going to have to twist it a little bit. Might have to grab the AC pipe and pull that up a little just to get that out of the way. And it slides right out. 
At this point, we're going to time the engine. We're going to use a 19 millimeter socket. You're going to need a 12 point on the crank bolt. You can see right here, there's a little cutout on the crank pulley. And on the top of the cover up here, there is a line, a timing mark where that needs to line up to. So what you need to do is turn the crank nice and slow, get that to line up. When that lines up, if the timing mark up top is not lined up, then you have to do it another 360 degrees. So go around one more time. You can see it with a mirror right here. And you want that line to line up with that notch right there. That looks pretty good. And we'll check it up top. And you can see on the cam sprocket, there's a mark right there. And if you draw a line right here, you can see you want that to line up right there, which it is. Now you're going to need a tool to prevent the sprocket from spinning, just like this. And then we're going to use an 18 millimeter socket and loosen this up. So we'll hold this like this and loosen up the bolt. Go. Hardest part is loosening it. Let's get it loose. It's not as bad. Yeah, there we go. Take that off. Now that's loose like that. Before we go any further, we're going to take the belt off. You can loosen up the tensioner down here. I'm just going to use a 13 millimeter wrench, loosen up the tensioner. that nut and washer off. Now that tensioner is loose. It makes sliding the belt off a lot easier. Slide that off and out of the way. Just leave the belt down below. You can slide the nut off, the bolt out. Grab the sprocket and slides right out. Just double check the keyway. You want to make sure that's in there so that doesn't fall out. I'm just going to use a straight blade screwdriver. Just pop this clip up. Disconnect this connector. Just like that. If you can push down, then you can do it that way, but sometimes a screwdriver helps a little bit. Now using a five millimeter hex socket, I'm going to take this bolt out right here, right next to the sensor, loosen it up, and slide that out. Using a 13 millimeter socket, take this bolt out here. this shield right here in front. You can just grab the sensor, pull the shield out just slightly. You can slide the sensor up and out of the way. Just like that. There is a bolt down here. If you want, you can loosen that. That's uh, one of the water pump bolts, but you don't have to. You can just slide it out of the way. Now we're going to slide this in the same way it came out. Just pull that cover back a little bit. And there's an area where this slides into this hole right here. There's a little nub. So you want to make sure that lines up there. And then get the two bolts in. Get this bolt started. And the other bolt started.
and tighten those down. Snug. And snug that one down. And connect the connector and lock it down. Now we can put the cam gear back on, line it up, line the keyway up with the slot. Put the bolt back in. And I'm going to put the belt on before before we tighten that down, but don't forget to tighten that down. Get this all lined up. I did make a mark on the belt where that timing mark is, although that might change. It might have moved down below, and that's okay. We're going to line it up afterwards. Now I'll take the tensioner. Now this slot in the tensioner right here, that's going to go, there's a little area where that's going to go in the block. Let's get that lined up. lined up the way it needs to be. I can put the washer on and the nut on the tensioner. Now I'm going to use this tool and this is for tensioning the tensioner. You're going to slide it towards the front of the vehicle like this and there is a guide on the back of the tensioner. You need to get the arrow to line up with that arrow lined up. I'll just snug this up first. And we'll torque that to 15 foot pounds. Now we want to make sure our timing mark is lined up down below. That's good right there. To make sure the belt is on the pulley correctly down below, we're going to just take the crank pulley off using a six millimeter hex socket. Take these four bolts out and the crank is not going to move while we're doing this. Just grab the pulley and it slides right out. You can see that the belt is on there correctly all the way around. And with that lined up down below, we can see our timing mark is right here. You can mark the belt and that's lined up with the timing mark up top and the tension on the belt is correct. So that's good. Now using our cam holder, now we want to torque this bolt to 74 foot pounds. Because the belt's on, it's okay if it moves. We can put the crank pulley back on, line that up. Tighten those down. I'm just going to use a strap wrench to go around the crank to prevent it from spinning. And then I'm going to torque these bolts to 18 foot pounds.
Now we can take this bracket, get it lined up. If you have to, you can raise the engine up a little more so that you can fit it in there. And just slide it in place. Helps if you just pull the motor fo forward slightly. That's in there. Now take the bolts. The longer bolt goes in the front. The two shorter bolts. Now tighten those three bolts down. Snug those up, make sure they're tight. And put the engine mount in, line it up. Make sure the mount goes under that bracket in the back there. You might have to lower this more. And get these bolts lined up. and put the other bolts in. Just make sure this lines up before you tighten them down. And snug those down. This bolt is going to go right here for that bracket. And then you want to tighten that down. Snug that down. Once that mounts in, then you can remove the cross member holding up the front of the engine. Now I'll take the cover and I'll line it up. that lined up and put the clips in place. One on the back as well. Make sure that's clipped in. That looks good. Now we're going to put the reservoir in. We're going to slide the hose this way. We just disconnected this in the front part of the engine. Over here. Pull the washer fluid out a little bit. If you have that screw in there, you want to take that out. And just line this up. We attach this right here. Use a hose clamp tool. Just use some hose clamp pliers. Slide this on. Slide that clip in place and take the nut, get the nut started back here on the stud. Being careful not to drop it. And put the screw in place over here. Get that started. Tighten those down. Just snug. And snug that down. Now you want to connect the connector. And then line this wire up. It's going to go right there. You can take these hoses, get those started. Just 
Just using the hose clamp pliers, move that down. Right there. This hose can go over here. Line that up. Slide that in place. Now we're going to slide the belt on. We're going to go down around the crank pulley. Then it goes around the power steering pulley. Oops. On the back side of the AC compressor. the alternator and on the back side of the tensioner. Make sure those are all lined up. And you can take your wrench and pull the tension off the tensioner and then just pull that pin out and loosen it up. Now you can take this shield and line it up. Push those push pins in. You can use a socket and push it a little bit further up if you want. Then underneath here, if you have that cover, you want to put that cover back underneath. And there's a screw back here, you want to put that screw in. And tighten that down. Now I take the inner fender well, get that lined up. and get all the fasteners started. And tighten those down. Line it up, put the lug nuts or lug bolts in. Now I'm going to torque the lug bolts to 89 foot-pounds in a cross pattern to tighten the wheel down evenly. Just go around again. Double check. Now take the center cap, line it up, and then push it in. Now you can connect the battery, put the negative terminal on, and tighten it down. And give it a wiggle, make sure it's tight. Now you want to add the appropriate coolant up to the fill line on the reservoir. Then run the engine for about 10 to 15 minutes, constantly monitoring the engine temperature, making sure it does not overheat. Then shut the vehicle off, let it cool down, and then adjust your level. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.